pure rage, anger, and hatred. No, that's not just my feelings for elves. That's also Korn's feelings about everybody. In this army guide, we're going to look at how to control the fury and wield Korn's army effectively. It will be broken up into two parts though, this first part looking at the roster and all the units and making sure we understand what they're all for, and part two will be all about the tactics and strategies of Korn's army and how to use all of these units. So, let us begin. First up, it's Hell's local hardman, Scarbrand the Exile, the legendary lord for Korn. As you can see by the unit card, he's got some big old beefy melee stats everywhere. Lots of armor, leadership, very fast as well. Big old melee attack with fire and magical damage. Lots of weapon strength, which is armor piercing. Huge charge bonus. Good bit of health as well. So needless to say, Scarbrand is all about the melee fight. He can smash infantry, cavalry, monsters, characters. With those kind of stats, you can pretty much take on anybody. The only big downside to Scarbrand though is that despite having wings, he actually can't fly. So he is... Not quite as mobile as other bloodthirsters, but with those kind of stats, who cares? When it comes to his abilities, he's got a magic missile, Bellow of Endless Fury, so technically a ranged attack for him, which is nice. Wrathful Reaper, which is a nice damage boost, but he goes into Rampage. And speaking of Rampage, Rage Embodied makes nearby enemy units go into Rampage, so taking control of enemy units there, pretty powerful. He also has Frenzy to increase his damage output when his leadership is above 50%. Fueled by Rage, a passive ability when his health is below 50%, he gains some damage boosts. And lastly, Slaughter and Carnage, more damage boosts that scale, as it says, effect intensity increases with each kill made by the unit. So the more stuff Scarbrand kills, the stronger he becomes. Disgusting. He also has a physical and spell resistance, causes terror, and is demonic so he won't rout and run away. Ultimately, Scarbrand is just a damage dealer powerhouse, a one-man army. He can do a ton of damage to everything. The only thing he really needs to watch out for is missiles and artillery, because those might gun him down, as he is such a big target. And then to one of your generic lords, the Exalted Bloodthirster. Very similar to Scarbrand in stats, just a little bit less of most things, so he's not quite as powerful, but still very strong. He is a bit faster as this boy is able to fly, so he does have that mobility over Scarbrand. But again, big damage dealer powerhouse can take on just about anything. Obviously, he's not anti-large, but he could still put some big damage on anti-large stuff because of that high melee attack and weapon strength. For his abilities, he's got Bloodthirst, which you'll want to use when he charges in because it boosts up his charge damage. Deathbringer, which is a damage boost to just himself, useful when he's in melee. Bellow of Fury, similar to Scarbrand's magic missile, just a little bit lesser. And then Burning Rage, an explosion spell, useful for doing a bit of damage, but also for getting him out of trouble if he is surrounded, potentially. And then one of the most interesting abilities, Wrath of Corn. This will make enemy casters' spells explode in their own faces. So if there's any casters nearby this boy and they try to drop some magic on him, it's going to backfire on them. And then Resistances, Terror and Demonic, the same as Scarbrand. So overall, again, a big damage dealer, just kind of a budget version of Scarbrand, the poor man Scarbrand, if you will. Although he does have some neat advantages over Scarbrand, like flying and that ability to make spells blow up in stupid wizard faces. If you need a cheap lord though, you might go for the Herald of Corn, A pretty reasonable damage dealer with decent melee attack, not fantastic weapon strength, but he does have a bonus versus infantry and armor piercing and a nice charge bonus, so he can put out some damage as long as he's fighting infantry. Although he's not super tough with only 40 armor and 40 melee defense, so you might need to be a little cautious with him. Although if you put him on his Juggernaut mount, he will become significantly tougher, having some more speed and armor and a little bit more damage too. He can gain some great support buffs for the army as well as regeneration for himself when in melee, amongst other things. So going to be best on one of those two mounts really. For his abilities, first off a couple of classics, Foe Seeker, good for getting yourself out of trouble or into it, and Deadly Onslaught, a nice damage boost for himself. Locus of Wrath, plus 40 melee attack to an area, so a really good one for supporting your front line, giving them some extra killing power. And then a bunch of usual stuff. And then we have Hellblade. This will give him a permanent damage boost once he's got 60 kills. And really shows that he's designed for fighting in crowds of infantry. And for also fighting alongside his boys because of this ability, Revel in Slaughter. Plus eight leadership and melee attack, to nearby friendly units while he's in melee. So good one for sticking with the frontline boys. And then the same stuff again, couple of resistances, fear this time instead of terror and is demonic of course, so won't rout and run away. 
So not only the cheapest Lord option that you have, but also a nice one for supporting the army more than the two Bloodthirsters do, because they focus on damage dealing and they're all about themselves, they're a bit selfish, but this Herald will support your army and help buff up their damage. So that's all of your Lord options. Now we've got a couple more characters in. Firstly, the Blood Reaper. This is basically a baby Herald of Corn. He's very much the same both in his stats and abilities, a little bit less in the stats. He's not quite as good, but still pretty strong. Same sort of anti-infantry role. Has the same mounts as well, either a Juggernaut or a Blood Shrine, providing the same benefits again. The only real difference here is that he doesn't have the ability that boosts melee attack, but he has one that can give 66% spell resistance to an area, so he can help protect your friendly boys from magic. So if you see a big spell about to come down, you can use that and negate most of the damage. So that's your Blood Reaper. And to your other hero option, the Cultist of Corn. Again, he's a crowd fighter, I think. Big silver shield to help protect him from missiles. Perhaps should have more melee defense considering the size of that shield, but he's pretty tough all the same. It doesn't have armor piercing though, so wants to fight the lighter troops if possible. Should be a reasonable damage dealer there if you charge him in. For his abilities, he can have Foe Seeker, Sword of the Anti-Heroes, and is able to get a summon of blood letters. Only a one-time use, but he can summon an extra unit of blood letters. Pretty nice. He also has frenzy and a missile resistance as well. So pretty tough boy with some good damage and a nice summon ability as well. Can get a chaos steed mount. So a good one to fight alongside your front line and support them where he can and provide that extra unit of blood letters. Now let's get into the real meat of Korn's army. Beginning with Bloodletters of Corn. These are one of your prime frontline infantries and one of the cheapest, although not really cheap. Good armor piercing damage with a bonus versus infantry and magic attacks on there. Not the toughest unit in the world with only 26 melee defense and 30 armor, but charge them in, let them do as much damage as they can. They've got a good charge bonus, so make sure you get that charge. They're a good choice if you want a faster frontline that can reach the enemy quicker as Chaos Warriors are quite slow although they are quite susceptible to being blasted by missiles on the way up. They can make a good flanking unit because of their speed as well, which will also make good use of their fear ability, and they have a couple of resistances as well. They'll be the choice if you need to bring a bigger army with more infantry. And then we have Exalted Blood Letters. These are very similar to the normal ones, just much better at the job with superior stats all across the board. They do have flaming attacks as well, which makes them one of the few units in the corn roster that can be useful against those weak to fire units. They also have that Hellblade ability, which when they've killed 60 enemies, they will get a permanent damage boost. So that's really nice. They're a big damage dealer overall. They are the most expensive unit of corn's infantry though, so you're probably only going to have one or two units of them to deal with elite infantry. And then to some chunky boys in the Chaos Warriors of Corn. These are your frontline holding choice. If you need a frontline that stays put and that won't break easily, these are the option you need. They've got big armor, a silver shield to protect them from missiles, so they're a good choice against missile heavy factions like Cathay. They've got good melee defense. They have frenzy as well, so they can still put out some damage. But if you want to get some serious hammer and anvil going with your big chunky cav or monsters, these will be the boys to hold that line for you and give you time to do that. Their only real downside is their speed at 28 is pretty damn slow. So you have to manage their movement with the rest of the army because you do have some faster units in there. You don't want these to fall behind and throw off the coordination of your army. If you're looking to break through the enemy front line though, rather than hold it in place, the dual weapon Chaos Warriors are the boys you need. They've got big weapon strength, which is anti-infantry. So primarily they want to smash up infantry. They could go after cavalry and things if they need to. They do have good weapon strength and melee attack to do that. But ideally, focus on infantry. They're pretty tough as well with big armor. Not a ton of melee defense, but they go pretty hard with frenzy as well. They can put out some serious damage very quickly. No armor piercing damage though, so going to be better against lighter troops. They'll shred those, but heavier troops will slow down their damage output. And speaking of slowed down again, 28 speed, pretty slow, got to manage their movement. And lastly for Korn's infantry, the Chaos Warriors of Korn Halberds. These are your anti-large choice. If you want a unit to defend your flanks from cavalry and monsters, these are going to be the boys to do it. Or you could leave one in the center and if some monsters attack your front line, you send these boys up to murder them or at least spook them off. And that's really where their best is trying to deter things because they're so slow again at 28 speed. They struggle to catch any monsters or cavalry and it'll just run away from them normally. So they're good for making things run away. And if they can get a hold of a large unit, by all means, smash it to pieces. But that can be a struggle for them. 
They do have a charge defense and charge reflection, so they will want to stand still if something charges into them. They don't have a ton of melee attack, although they do have armor piercing, they don't do terrifically at fighting infantry. Now to some chunky animals. The good old Gore Beast Chariot, a Warhammer 2 Warriors of Chaos classic, to which it is pretty much the same, except it does have frenzy, so it can potentially do more damage, but has less melee defense at only 22, so will potentially take more damage. So further lends it to the idea of how chariots are supposed to be used, keep them moving at all times if possible. Charge them through units and back out the other side, and then move it on to another unit and do the same thing. Don't leave it in melee combat for a prolonged period because they do not do well there with that low ass melee defense. A great unit for harassing the back line of enemy armies though, disrupting missiles, hammer and anviling in the back. They do have fear as well, so they can use that to help break enemy leadership. Just a big, heavy, hard hitting problem for the enemy to try and stop. If hard hitting is your game though, you'll probably want some kind of juggernaut cavalry. First off with the blood crushers, big, heavy, chunky cavalry. Pretty slow at only 62 speed, lots of armor though. They do have blood letters on them, these ones, so technically they're demonic and they won't rout and run away, which is pretty nice. Do have that armor piercing and bonus versus infantry, so best for targeting infantry more than anything else. They do have the Hellblade ability, so once they get 60 kills, they can get a damage boost. So just a big, heavy, hard-hitting cavalry. Charge them into the back of infantry and you will absolutely ruin their lives, especially with the fear ability. Or you can straight up just charge infantry units in the face and you'll do a lot of damage there too. Just make sure they're not braced or have charge reflection or anything. And they are classed as a melee cavalry technically, but they don't have a ton of melee defense at only 34, so do be careful leaving them in prolonged combat because they may take more damage than you'd like. But otherwise, absolute destroyers of infantry. And if they weren't enough, how about some skull crushers of corn? Pretty much the same type of deal, except they've got chaos warriors on top, big armor, they've got a shield as well to protect them from missiles, big armor piercing weapon strength, even bigger charge bonus than the previous unit. They just hit like an absolute double decker shagoth. And while they are classed as a shock cavalry, which means they want to cycle charge in and back out, in and back out, rather than staying in prolonged combat, they have reasonable melee defense, so they can survive pretty well in prolonged combat, but with that huge charge bonus of 70, they'll want to make use of that charging in over and over again. They do as well have Frenzy for more damage and cause fear, but unlike the previous Demon Letter version, they are not unroutable, so they will break and run away if you're not careful. They can smash everything in the face pretty well with that armor piercing damage, Infantry preferably perhaps, but they could take on cavalry or monsters maybe. Don't have an anti-large bonus, but with such high charge bonus, they can still do some good work against anybody. Now to some even larger entities. Well, these first few may not be larger, but good old Chaos Warhounds, we all know what these are for. Great for harassing missile infantry and artillery, chomping them down. Maybe skirmish cab as well, but that is really about it. They could hammer an anvil into the back of some enemy infantry that's fighting your infantry and maybe put on some leadership penalties, even though they won't do a great deal of damage. So mostly there to harass missiles and artillery as one of the speedier units of Korn's army. Their vanguard deployment allows them to play this role well too. And then we have flesh hounds of Korn, who are basically the same as the warhounds, just bigger, tougher and hit harder. So they can go after those missile infantries and artilleries, but they could also take on some infantry, cycle charging though, because they don't have much armor or melee defense, so they will take damage quite quickly. Very susceptible to missiles as well. They do have that vanguard deployment to help them be nice and sneaky. Do have a physical resistance to help negate some damage a little bit, but it's not gonna save them that much. They do cause fear as well and are demonic, so they won't rout and run away. So use them as you would Warhounds, they're just going to be better at the job and more versatile because they could take on some infantry a bit more as well. If you need the ultimate missile harasser though, you'll probably go with Chaos Furies of Korn. They're very fast with 110 speed, pretty much lack everything else. They've got a good bit of weapon strength, but they're not very tough, so don't expect them to last too long. These are a great way to stop missiles and artillery firing. This helps protect the rest of your army, the more important units, from all the potential missile and artillery damage that they may take possibly at the expense of the Fury's lives, but usually that's worth it. They do have Vanguard deployment to help them with that role. They do have Frenzy, but that probably won't last long because they'll probably go below 50% health pretty quick. They do have a physical resistance to help them survive, but with 20 armor and 18 melee defense, it's probably not gonna do a great deal. The Fear is nice as well, can help maybe with some hammer and anvil on frontline infantry, but overall a nice harasser of missiles. And then to another Warhammer 2 classic, the Chaos Spawn, or Spawn of Corn, as they're called in this, a nice little rhyme. 
pretty much the usual Chaos spawn that you know and love or feel no strong feelings about. They most notably have big weapon strength which is great for smashing unarmored infantry. They're unbreakable so they'll hold a the line pretty well but they don't have much in the way of defenses with only 10 armor and 24 melee defense. They'll go into rampage. They do cause fear though so a nice damage dealer of cheap unarmored infantry but against tougher stuff they'll probably take damage very quickly and won't last too long. On to the Minotaurs of Korn. A Beastmen classic, of course. These ones are the anti-infantry version. Lots of weapon strength, armor piercing, bonus versus infantry. Nice charge bonus. Great for smashing all kinds of infantry, preferably the more elite of them. But they could go after monsters and cavalry as well with that big weapon strength charge bonus and reasonable melee attack. So overall, they're pretty versatile. They don't have the best melee defense though, so if you can charge them around every now and again, it's probably going to help them out in terms of taking damage, as they do have a big charge bonus, it's good to try and make use of it as well. The biggest danger to them is missiles and artillery, because they are big targets and don't have any kind of shield. And Korn also has the Great Weapon version, which is all about anti-large. This one is designed for going after the cavalry monsters, lords on mounts, whatever, anything larger. They are going to smash to pieces with their bonus versus large. Still a solid charge bonus, all the other stats pretty much the same. These ones you'll want to bring along if you expect the enemy army to have some big large units in it or some strong cavalry. You'll want a couple of units of these to try and nullify that. And as both of these Minotaur units are some of the faster units in the army, they can be good for flanking and getting behind the enemy lines. Now to the big old soul grinder of Korn. This thing is just all about absolutely murdering everybody in the most brutal fashion possible. Lots of melee attack with fire and magic damage. Pretty big weapon strength, although not the best. It is armor piercing though, so lots of damage to be done in melee. It is one of the few units in the Korn army as well, capable of a ranged attack. It has a missile which does a hell of a lot of armor piercing damage, only a range of 120 though, so it's kind of a close range deal. But that's enough to do something about what most of your army can't do anything about, and that's flying units. So this thing could be pretty essential against factions with strong flying units. It can fire whilst moving as well, so that can help it keep the damage pressure up even as it's approaching the enemy army. It does have beefy enough combat stats to pretty much take on anything, although with only 35 melee defense, you want to be careful fighting infantry, because if it gets surrounded, it's going to take a lot of hits that it won't be able to defend that well against, and it may take damage quicker than you'd like. It does have a physical resistance and spell resistance, as well as causing terror, and is demonic, so won't rout and run away. A good one for softening up elite units with its ranged attack, and just damaging everybody with its melee. And lastly, the big boy Bloodthirster, very similar to the Exalted Bloodthirster of course, a little bit less in the stats, but this one is anti-large. That's his key selling point here. He's going to be the one flying around trying to take out enemy monsters, lords and heroes on mounts, maybe cavalry as well. Lots of damage dealer potential flaming attacks as well, could go after infantry by all means, but being one of the few units that is mobile and anti-large for Korn, he's going to be useful at that role. So he's primarily going to be looking around the battlefield for any large units he can take advantage of and probably wipe out. But of course, this kind of power does not come cheap. To the final section of this roster then. Blood Shrine of Corn is your first war machine. This is a separate unit, but can be a mount for lords and heroes as well. Does have some good damage output potential with armor piercing damage, a bonus versus infantry, flame and magic attacks. A decent charge bonus, lots of armor, doesn't have so much melee defense though, but it does have a physical resistance and regenerates itself while fighting in melee. So it's tougher than it might seem, but most notably it will buff up nearby friendly troops with some melee attack and leadership, so it can help support the front line slash army. And lastly, the Skull Cannon, the only artillery piece and again one of the few ranged unit options. Nice range at 380 and decent missile strength with armor piercing damage, nice melee damage as well. The trick with this thing though is that it doesn't have a ton of ammo so you kind of want to use up all that ammo first of all and then get it into melee where it can replenish its ammo from fighting in melee and then pull it back out and try to use that ammo again. Good for sniping down large targets with the ammo, good for taking out infantry in melee. Doesn't have a ton of melee defense though so you want to be a bit careful about who you fight, anything too strong might beat it up a little too easy. It does, just like the Blood Shrine though, regenerate when it's in melee as well, so it can heal itself and help itself that way. But overall, just a good ranged option for sniping things down maybe in the air or sniping down large targets, and then moving over to the anti-infantry role, so it's quite versatile in where and who it can attack. So there we go, all the units in Korn's roster. I hope this all makes sense and is helpful. 
In the second part, we're going to look at the tactics and strategies and how to use all these units together and to use the army as one and to win those battles. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the future.